Hello YouTube, this is uh, Jeremiah from Econo Power. I'm just giving you guys a quick video from a video um, that I just saw here about a 600 watt um, unit that a guy was using down there, I believe in Australia. And uh, I wanted to show you my system and how we're set up. Now, it, I'm gonna go ahead and get advice that, you know, it's best to go ahead and ignore anything that you see that's in the way that's not about solar power because we're still remodeling. Hey, Sierra. Hey, Daddy. And that's my little dirt daughter in there. But I'm here remodeling. Just washed some clothes. Um, honestly, haven't built the clothesline that we want to. The bed still hasn't been made. I'm still actually dressed like I'm going to work. But anyway, um, take you outside and let you see what I got here. This is a mobile home that I recently purchased outright. Um, and we've been remodeling it since. Um, got my trailer there that I'm working on. Supplies, things like that. And you got full open uh, yards. And those are my neighbor's yards there. They grow cactuses, have chickens, things like that. But anyway, this is uh, my system. I have a combiner box here. Um, this box here actually goes down, feeds into the line, goes down to the ground so I can drive over it and goes into the house. Um, where it's fused on the inside of a, of a battery box or whatnot. Um, and basically that, that does the work for me as far as getting the electricity into the home instead of having um, a bunch of random wiring going in. I got one uh, eight gauge set of wires going in, feeding my positive and, and uh, negative. Now what you see here is I have uh, basically two kilowatts of power here. I've been able to get more than that. Um, it's what now March 7th, 8th, somewhere around there. So uh, the winter just passed, but in the winter time, I, I got as much as 2.2 kilowatts, believe it or not, out of this system. These are four uh, 300 watt Renogy panels. Um, and then those right there are also four uh, Renogy 100 watt panels. And then I have a mixture up there um, of four 85 watt Renogy panels. They're all rated at the same. Um, voltage for all the black panels the blue panels are rated a little bit higher um, I found that uh, with my MPPT charge controller I'm able to get um, <clears throat> if I reset it every 90 minutes I'm able to get maximum power point so I I didn't I ha used to have uh, two in uh, charge controllers that ran the two different types of solar cells uh, for polycrystalline and monocrystalline but when I ran my tests um, honestly the output was negligible um, it would you having a full two kilowatts um, and, and running that um, through your system, I'm probably losing, I couldn't guesstimate the math, I didn't do it, but I'm probably losing maybe 60, 70 watts uh, here and there. But the fact that I'm not having to run a second charge control on my battery bank at night and you know, the fact that it's a, a, really a small amount of energy when you compare it through the big scheme of things, um, I'm saving money on the cost of that charge controller I was able to sell and uh, the power that I'm using. And I'll just show you a quick backside shot of this. Um, in the winter time, I was able to get this thing to freeze. And that was awesome because I was getting, like I said, maximum power. The highest point I got when I recorded it was 2.2 kilowatts. And as you can see, this thing's not buttoned up nice, but it's uh, serving a function because it's temporary um, until I move. Now, we've recently had a tornado out this way, and believe it or not, <laughs> Um, we didn't get hit directly, but um, about 30 miles uh, uh, west of us, I was I actually did get a um, a impact from that. Uh, this uh, panel right here actually blew over, broke the uh, MC4 connection. But <laughs> this thing's actually pretty rugged because I was able to screw it back down using my washers to the wood, um, and I got it back working, no problem. I have these two large panels actually in uh, series and then in parallel with these and the four panels that are 100 watt are in parallel with the each string and like I said they come into a combiner box here now on the inside um, because I don't know how to pause the camera I'm gonna just simply walk you in ignore the mess but uh on the inside you'll see where I have my fuse box this is one of my little side projects I actually have to uh, 265 watt uh, energy panels there hooked up to a um, backup power supply. So um, that actually 
works pretty well for me. I, I haven't used it in an emergency situation or anything, but I just thought it'd be neat to work that. And again, we just wash clothes. Um, we don't have a clothesline. We do have a dryer, which I only run on a generator or on a um, day that we're fully uh, full. But you'll find out with running it with a generator. The generator is actually peak out somewhere around 5,000 watts. So I had to buy a 7,000 watt just to be able to get that thing to run. But man, it's uh, it's actually starting to heat up the house pretty quickly. So I decided it's you know it's actually better to pay that three dollars to go to the dryer. Um, when I pick up the kids and just try to close that way or I'll buy a clothesline and hang it outside anyway uh, here's my control panel you can see here out back power systems powering the planet they rock um, built this uh, custom frame here I actually have a watering system uh, set up son I'm on the camera can you leave this way thank you all right so you guys can watch TV yes uh, the kids just got out of school, so anyway, I'll show you what we got here. I built a custom, oh. custom wall here. No, nah. I built a custom wall here, and then I put doors on on it. Um, my wife keeps her laundry soaps and stuff up there until we finish up here. Still framing that wall out and all that good stuff, but for the most part, the rest of the house is done. I changed out the lights. This is a 48 inch LED strip light. Pulls about 18 watts. Um, then I got one string of a 48 volt battery bank, 205 amp hours, and then I multiply that times three. And I have, so around 600 and, what is that? 615, 620 and, uh, amp hours on a 48 volt, which is the equivalent of about um, 2,400 watt hours. I'm sorry, amp hour when it comes down to a 12 volt battery. Now behind here is my control box. Um, this is again something custom. Got my fire smoke detector thing in there. Uh, got my, uh, of course, my Outback power inverter. I have two of these, but only one of them hooked up. It actually is uh, hooked up through. Um, let me think of the gauge. I think I used uh, six gauge wire on that. And it goes into a bus bar, which is found behind this, which is fused, and then goes back through. You can't probably see, but let me turn this light off. That's my inverter turn on. Got my inverter, but my power, charge controller turn on to pull itself off. It's in that little corner there. Um, my uh, my FlexNet DC is down there. You can see the lights coming from it. Uh, you can see my uh, battery desulfator plugged in there. And then my manual off switch. Now, I wish I had enough time, but there's a disconnect, DC disconnect, down at the bottom on the floor where those two wires come up and in and through the house. Um, right here, you have my wiring that goes to all my networks. My Somehow I ended up getting a phone call right in the middle of that. But anyway, whole house is network. And it works like that. And then I'll bring it to the front here. And what you'll see here, it's 86.9 degrees outside, 43% humidity. Uh, let's see the time there, it's 456. My outside um, thermometer, it's batteries are dead. Anyway, you can see I'm bringing in 500 watts right now, but that's only because I'm in float. Um, I'm floating at 500. If my wife were to turn on the microwave or start to cook something, I'd fill up. But you can see here, I brought in 128 amp hours um, at the 48 volts. So that's 6.99 kilowatts. Typically on a day that we're using a lot of power, by the end of the day, we'll end up bringing in somewhere around 9 to 10 kilowatts. Um, you can see we started the day as low as 90% and got to 100%. Um, if you look at our trends, um, let me see here. Uh, trying to do this through the camera you can see we were net up 62 amp hours you can see we on a pretty regular basis are using about 100 to 100 and, well about 200 kilo uh, 200 amp hours but you can see here we got 11 amp hour or 11 kilowatt hours there 9.3 7.5 7.8 in the day like i said we're, we're hovering where we are um we're all the way back in February, 
but uh, for the most part, we've we've never gotten below 70%. Um, most days we're at 80, 80, uh, 90, somewhere around there. That one, 68 for some reason. Anyway, um, exiting this, I think my charge control just turned off to reset itself. Yep, it's uh, it's actually doing one of those uh, scheduled uh, searches. You know, I programmed it to do it every every 90 minutes. It searches for the maximum power point uh, to give me the most amount of power in those panels. And, uh, different ways, uh, different methods of creating that power. Monocrystalline, polycrystalline. Um, I have them set up to where it's trying to get me the most power each day. Um, just as, as a uh, thing for you guys so you can see how this works. And I went a couple of things. Again, just built this closet. Get my son out of the way. Hey, son. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Trying to vacuum? Okay. Well, um, that actually probably work out fine. I got my laser jet printer there. Um, I was going to plug in an iron, but if he's going to run that, that works out. You will see where my unit just goes straight into the um trying to refill the batteries but one second i'm helping with this cord i just put this shelf in a few minutes ago when i was watching that video i thought they were spawning so anyway let me get here all right turn the vacuum also let me go back in here and show you guys what i got all right so we're looking at, we're, we're outputting about 380 watts, kilowatts, oh, sorry, 380 watts. My son now turned the vacuum on and you can hear it. It went to as high as two kilowatts, now it's at 1700. What my inverter did is uh, it turned off so that it can actually search for the maximum amount of power that it's gonna be able to give to the batteries to compensate for what's going out. It's doing a full search because I programmed it to do so instead of doing a half search. So it's going to take probably another 30, 40 seconds before it actually starts to output. Um, let's see here. Again, working through the, the frame here. You can see the most I got today was 2,073 watts. Um, and the most I actually put into the battery is 60.5 volts. So. You, hey, turn the vacuum off. Turn the vacuum off. You probably can't. But you can see I've been operating for 9 hours, 44 minutes. I've been floating for 2 hours, 18. Absorbing at 1 hour and 4 minutes. Um, and it turned itself off. But I'm still waiting on it to refresh. I usually don't stand here and watch it. But uh, let me just go here and start a bolt charge. And make it probably turn itself off because it was in bulk for so long. Anyway, now you can see it's searching through the, uh, the voltages and you see the uh, power going up. Uh, shaded right now, so I'm waiting on that to jump back up when the sun is no longer blocked by the clouds. Um, Alright, and there you go. Alright, we got 460, 490, 530, 540. See this thing climbing. Like I said, the panels right now are shaded. I think I should have did this around lunchtime. Because this is actually where the panels start to uh, stop getting light. It's 5, 5 1 p.m. But, uh... Anyway, you can see we've been here. Teresa, how long have we been here? About six months off grid. Okay, so, you know, we've been six months off grid, no issues. Um, you know, I don't use electricity for heating. We have a gas stove um, through propane. Um, I'll take you outside. We have a gas stove for heating, um, and we have this big boy here that I bought at a uh, tractor supply company and put an adapter on. It cost a uh, hundred bucks to fill this thing up like three months ago. Um, and it's still going. It runs my hot water. Got my stove going. And this is an on-demand water heater I got from eBay. I think it was uh, 200 bucks. Uh, it's not perfectly hooked up, I don't think. But I, yeah, in fact, you can see where I got the wires crossed, the hoses crossed. Uh, to the left is the hot, to the right is the cold. But 
anyway i hooked it up backwards and had to reverse it and i haven't cleaned that up yet um anyway you can see the exhaust it goes out into the duct anyway i just wanted to show you that it is achievable that you can uh have a lifestyle off grid and still live and use it every uh day utilities uh not necessarily utilities, but utilize the uh, everyday uh, appliances that normal households have, except for I'm off grid. Um, I do not rely on um, electricity for heating as stay, stated, but I can cook with a, a uh, cooktop. Um, I have a little uh, living solutions oven that we use for cookies and things like that because I don't like baking using the gas, but um, six months, no energy bills. Um, six months free independence um nobody comes out here and bothers us we're gonna eventually do some other projects on our own land but for right now we're we're in this spot for i think a hundred dollars a month water comes in free so anyway that's what i've done thanks comment